There's so many beautiful looking vehicles out there that we've all seen before. Today, we'll be taking a look at the most hideous looking ones around. Join me as we take a look at 15 of the most ugly vehicle designs. Number 15. Airbus Beluga We're used to large aircraft being designed in very specific ways, usually to make them as streamlined as possible, so they're as fuel efficient as they can be. But sometimes designers have to take a different approach to satisfy the needs of the plane's operators. Airbus is one of the two main plane manufacturers around the world and run a highly complex operation, whereby parts are made in countries across Europe and further afield. Eventually, these separate pieces have to be brought together to finish each aircraft, but with such bulky elements such as the wings, they had to design a brand new transport aircraft to avoid having to send the parts by land or sea. The result was the Beluga, which is based upon an Airbus A300, but has a significantly enlarged fuselage. Most of it remains the same as the A300, but the upper fuselage was enhanced with a horseshoe-shaped structure, and this gave it a larger cargo capacity than a C5 Galaxy or Antonov AN-124. The front end of the plane opens up to allow for easier loading and unloading, and it led to a major improvement in Airbus's production capabilities. This doesn't, however, take away from how peculiar it looks from all angles, and there's no doubt that it does strangely resemble the beluga whale that it's named for. Number 14. Consulier GTP Sports cars are normally the coolest and slickest vehicles on the road, but this isn't always the case. There's one big exception to this rule, and it was built by Consulier Industries between 1985 and 1993. Known as the GTP, it was a mid-engine sports car that in its second version had a top speed of 155 miles per hour and was quite successful in the IMSA racing series. It was the GTP's brilliant power-to-weight ratio that meant no other model could compete for years, and it was only after the 2,200-pound car was given a 300-pound weight penalty and subsequently banned altogether in 1991 that it stopped winning races. However, where the Consulier GTP went right on performance, it, it completely lacked in the looks department. The chassis itself was made purely from fiberglass, carbon fiber, and Kevlar, and was the first of its type not to have structural metal in its body. But it was chunky, box-like, and had a complete lack of interior fittings, meaning it was only really suited to be raced, despite being road legal. Number 13. Yohammer J1 the best motorcycle manufacturers put a huge amount of effort into their overall vibe and vision, but sometimes designers can get so caught up in the features and unique aspects of a new model that they forget that someone is ultimately meant to sit on it and drive it in public. With such a focus on the development of low emission or fully electric vehicles in recent years, there was real excitement when Johammer E-Mobility from Austria announced their all-new electric motorcycle in 2014 but this soon dissipated when people saw what it actually looked like. Despite offering a top speed of 75 miles per hour, a range of 125 miles, and a charge time of a couple of hours, it has a two-arm steering wheel hub, and the designers were clearly trying to make something that felt futuristic and industry-leading. But rather than feeling like the next evolution in motorcycle design, however, it instead seems almost half-finished, and how you'd expect a budget bike of the future to be rather than a premium model. They certainly included a few impressive elements, such as dash displays within the rearview mirrors, that will likely become commonplace, but it's no surprise outside of Austria that it hasn't taken off and become the electric motorcycle of choice around the rest of the world. Number 12. Piasecki H21 Developed in the late 1940s and early 50s, initially as an Arctic rescue vehicle, the H-21 by the American company Piasecki is probably the strangest looking helicopter ever built. Nicknamed the Flying Banana, the tandem rotor design had an unusual upward angle of its rear fuselage, and this was done so there was never any chance of the large rotors striking the fuselage in any conditions, which meant it was highly adaptable. The H-21 was usable with wheels, skis, or floats, and featured a number of winterization elements that allowed it to operate in temperatures as low as negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It's powered by a nine-cylinder air-cooled radial piston engine, and it had a maximum speed of 127 miles per hour, with a range of up to 265 miles, and depending on its operational requirements, could be fitted with two M60 machine guns. 
Despite its unusual appearance, the H-21 became a popular aircraft for the U.S. Army, Air Force, and the French Army, where it was used for rescue operations and troop transport. But its ability to function in the cold weather meant it was far less suited to warmer climates, and following issues on deployment in Vietnam, most were removed from service in 1965. Number 11. Chevrolet SSR You'd normally expect a new design from Chevrolet to be a good-looking vehicle, but not even the famed American manufacturer gets it right every time. Between 2003 and 2006, the company made the SSR, which stands for Super Sport Roadster, and was a retractable hardtop convertible pickup truck. Fitted with a Vortec 5300 V8 engine, it was able to accelerate from 0 to 60 in just 7.7 .7 seconds, and there were even hopes that one could be adapted to try to break the land speed record, although this one ultimately failed. With an overall aesthetic said to be inspired by Chevrolet's pickup trucks of the late 1940s, but with a modern twist, the SSR seemed like it had an identity crisis and wasn't sure which era it belonged in. While its performance was on par with other models in its class, the unusual design choices are what led to its downfall. Even with a huge marketing effort, which included one being used as the pace car of the 2003 Indianapolis 500, it initially only sold less than 9,000 units, which led to the factory where it was produced being closed for five weeks because there was so much available stock. In the end, less than 25,000 SSRs were manufactured, and it remains one of Chevy's most underwhelming creations. Number 10. Sin S1 Based in Bulgaria, Sin Cars was formed in 2012 to produce cars for racing series and also street-legal high-performance vehicles. But even in their short existence, they have already managed to design what's possibly the ugliest sports car ever. Called the Sin S1, it was the second car they released and was made to be as lightweight and nimble as possible for both track and car use. The problem, though, was the bodywork almost looks as if it's been made from plastic and left in the hot sun for too long, with a warped appearance and elements such as headlight recesses only further showing how little the designers understand about what makes a car appealing. To make things even stranger, the Sin S1 was sold as a modular product, which meant that customers would buy the chassis first and then choose the drive chain, interior, and body packages that they wanted to provide the required performance and comfort. The version shown to the world was, by all accounts, the top-of-the-range version of the S1, and while the paired-back options certainly look less ghastly, the company unsurprisingly didn't sell very many at all, with only a few hundred believed to exist. Number 9. Ramform Titan Ships normally have a long, tapered, streamlined shape to allow them to pass through the water more effectively, but there's one that completely bucks that trend, and it's often described as being the ugliest boat ever made. Of course, there's a good reason why certain design decisions have been chosen, and while it's extremely good at performing the role it was built for, it's still an almighty eyesore. It's called the Ramform Titan, and it launched in 2013. It's the most advanced seismic ship ever. Used by oil and gas exploration companies, it looks as if it's just the front half of a boat, but the flat rear edge is the perfect platform for dragging 24 streamer reels of sensors that allows it to collect huge amounts of data about the seabed and help these companies determine where the most valuable sources of natural resources are. Designed to stay at sea for extended periods of time, the Titan could, however, be one of the most enjoyable ships to travel on, other than those designed specifically for cruises. At 341 feet long and 230 feet wide, it has space to accommodate 80 crew members at a time, and its own sports arena, swimming pool, sauna, fitness room, auditorium, and three television lounges to keep them entertained. That still didn't help its overall aesthetic. Number 8. Nissan S Cargo The Japanese automaker Nissan is one of the world's leading manufacturers, and while they aren't particularly known for creating awe-inspiring designs, Instead, focusing on functional offerings, they've certainly plumbed the depths of taste to produce some truly monstrous machines. Top of that list has to be the Nissan S Cargo, a retro-styled van that was made between 1989 and 1991 and was only sold at first in Japan at Nissan Cherry stores. Inspired by the Citroën 2CV, with a name that was meant as a double entendre, meaning both the small cargo and also sounding like the French word escargot, which translates to mean snail. It had a one and a half liter engine and a three-speed automatic transmission with air conditioning. 
For those customers drawn in by the large windshield, the strangely elongated hood that seemed like it was initially designed for a different vehicle, and the headlamps that gave the front end an almost face-like quality, there were two optional extras, oval-shaped windows on either side of the rear end of the van, and an electric canvas sunroof. It's probably not the greatest surprise that the S-Cargo didn't sell particularly well, and in the end the company only produced 8,000 of them. Most were sold in Japan, and with little interest elsewhere in the world, production ended, and the company moved on as quickly as possible. Number 7. Victory Vision Motorcycles come in a different number of styles, from the lightweight and nimble to the more heavy set that are ideal for long distances, and you'd think that a company that has a good record in the industry would find it difficult to come up with a design that's completely horrendous. Victory, however, showed that it was indeed possible with the release of the Vision. First introduced in 2007 with several updates since then, it almost seems as if it's trying to retain classic design elements while being modern and futuristic, and the result is something that you'd be embarrassed to be seen in. To make things worse, it's a premium priced product, meaning for the same cost you'd be riding something much, much better. So quite why, with its strangely wide lines, Victory thought this would be a success is a mystery. The biggest surprise of all is that the company turned out to be right in ways, and the Vision actually sold rather well, which is why it's been worth the time to release upgraded models. But no matter how good an engine it may have or how comfortable it is, it certainly isn't anywhere close to being a good looking bike. Number 6. Boeing X-32 Boeing is, of course, most famous for making large passenger aircraft that revolutionize the concept of long-distance travel, and has opened up the world to virtually anyone who has wanted to explore different places. Another side of their business is the design of military aircraft, though, and while this is also a highly successful industry for them, not all of their prototypes have hit the mark. The X-32 was designed for the Joint Strike Fighter competition during the 1990s to develop the new class of fighter aircraft for the air forces of the US, UK, Italy, Canada, Australia, and several other countries. The contest was ultimately won by Lockheed Martin with their design, which became the F-35 Lightning II in what was a huge loss for Boeing. And while the X-32 certainly had some fantastic attributes, it soon became known as the Smiling Aircraft because of its unusual design. At 45 feet long and with a wingspan of 36 feet, it was powered by a Pratt & Whitney afterburning turbofan engine that gave it a top speed of Mach 1.6. But to reduce overall production costs, Boeing opted for a one-piece carbon fiber composite delta wing and a direct lift thrust vectoring system. Because this was fitted around the main engine, the engine had to be mounted behind the cockpit and is also what necessitated the huge chin-mounted air intake that gives the X-32 its odd appearance. All wasn't lost for Boeing, though. Things that were learned with the X-32, both good and bad, led to the development of the F-A-18 Super Hornet that's used by the US, Australian, and Kuwaiti Air Forces. Number 5. Pontiac Aztec It's rare for companies to take real risks with new products that they release, but in 2000, General Motors wanted to try to revolutionize the SUV market and saw the Aztec as the way to do it. Marketed as a sports recreational vehicle, it had a number of clever inclusions such as rear outswing doors, a bi-parting rear tailgate, and a remarkably comfortable interior. And from all reviews and customer feedback, the company had produced a reliable and very competent new car. The problem, though, was that it looked terrible. And while there was a unanimous praise for its performance and features, it was hounded for its aesthetics. And instead of selling the 75,000 per year GM had hoped, the most it ever sold in 12 months was 28,000, 2,000 short of the number they needed to break even. Regularly voted in countdowns of the ugliest cars, the best description for the problems with the Aztec came from motor journalist Dan Neal. He pointed out that we tend to prefer cars that look like us, and the Aztec, with the extra eyes and strange nostrils, just looked deformed and scary, and is the type of car that dogs would bark at as it drove by. Number 4. Kamov Ka-26 Designed for the Soviet Union by Kamov, a helicopter manufacturing company, the Ka-26 was created to be an easily adaptable aircraft that could be used for a variety of different uses. And while the same was achieved, it also became the strangest looking helicopter ever built. 816 of them came off the production line between 1968 and 85, 
and the design is made up of a bubble-shaped cockpit for the pilot and optional co-pilot, with a removable box behind that it could be interchanged for a medevac, passenger transport, or crop dusting variant. It was powered by two 9-cylinder radial piston engines and has a top speed of 110 miles per hour and a range of up to 250 miles. Cleverly, it was designed so that it was small enough to land on a truck bed, and this led to it being a popular model for farmers who needed to spray huge fields. It did, though, have far too much instrumentation in the cockpit for uses like that, as the 18 dials actually obscured part of the view needed to avoid electric cables and pylons at low altitudes. A number of air forces use them, too, as transport vehicles, and despite the need for continual maintenance, they've proved to be highly effective, even though they have no chance of winning any beauty contests. Number 3. Guilty Owning a super yacht is either a sign that you've made it or a crass display of wealth, depending on how you look at things. But surely, if you were going to spend millions or tens of millions of dollars on a boat, then you'd at least want it to look good and fit in with the picturesque surroundings that you travel to. On the whole, this tends to be the case, but there are some yachts that are truly ghastly. Probably the worst of all, though, is aptly named Guilty, and it's the result of a collaboration between American artist Jeff Koons and Italian designer Ivana Pofiri. The 115-foot vessel may have all the luxurious features and comforts that you'd expect on a superyacht, but from the moment you lay eyes upon it, it's impossible to forget the assault on the senses that the exterior can cause. The bright geometric designs with yellow rhombuses, pink triangles, and blue polygons definitely make it stand out amongst the rest of the marina that it's moored in, which is all the more surprising considering it's supposedly inspired by the camouflage pattern designs used by the British Navy in the First World War. It's almost a letdown to know that the interior is actually calm and white throughout, with modest artworks and an overall relaxing environment. You'd almost forgive the outrageous exterior design if the person that owned it also subjected themselves to that horror, rather than simply inflicting it upon anyone else who has the misfortune to see it. Number 2. Fiat Multipla Produced by Fiat between 1998 and 2010, no one in the motoring industry could question the Multipla's credential as a family car. From its two rows of three seats to the ample internal storage space and adaptability, but from the offset, there was one glaring issue with it, its overall look. Famed for winning Car of the Year and Ugliest Car of the Year in the same award show, and was perhaps best summed up as resembling a psychotic cartoon duck. While owners would benefit from all the features it offered, they couldn't help but feel like the neighbors were secretly or openly laughing at them and wondering what had happened to convince them to buy one in the first place. Surprisingly, despite being a country known for their design, the Multipla sold best in Italy and didn't exactly set the world alight anywhere else. By 2004, Fiat reluctantly accepted that the only fault with the car was its aesthetics and completely redesigned the exterior, which was received well with critics and consumers alike. The original Multipla will, however, always be remembered as the time that Fiat's designers moved on from the blandness of the 90s and really took out-of-the-box thinking to a new level. But when a car manufacturer creates something that makes its owners prefer to walk than drive, clearly, something's gone wrong. Number 1. Nissan Cube Nissan is easily one of the world's largest car producers, and perhaps surprisingly was the largest car company in North America in 2014, the world's largest electric vehicle manufacturer in 2018. So when they released a new model, customers are keen to try it out for themselves. That's perhaps the only explanation for why the Cube was in production for 21 years before being cancelled in 2019, but its reception in various markets was noticeably different. Designed as a subcompact car that was ideal for urban driving, the first generation was based on the Nissan Micra, and instead of thinking outside the box, the creator simply put the wheels on a box and went from there. It certainly had an edgy feel, but only because of the actual edges on the bodywork, and for a car of its size, it had a surprisingly large storage capacity. That did lead to it being quite the success in the Japanese market, where it continuously sold for the 21-year production run, and the company was sure that it had, against all expectations, created the next best thing. With countless design and innovation awards, their sights turned to the North American and European markets, ironing out some of their earlier problems, and the Cube launched in both those markets in 2009. 
Two years later, however, the Cube was withdrawn from Europe because of lackluster sales, and its American journey didn't go much better, with it suffering a similar fate in 2014. Something that wasn't helped by a mass recall triggered by a fuel system safety issue. Despite the mixed success, Nissan hasn't tried to reinvent the Cube concept with its new range of electric cars, and luckily for everyone, they've moved on to more traditional concepts. Watch our Vehicles playlist for more top 15 videos about amazing vehicles. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best vehicle videos.